Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to your channeled message reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do hope you're doing well, feeling safe, and feeling blessed because you are. Um, so before we get started on the reading, I do also want to say thank you guys so much uh, for those of you who submitted a private tarot reading request um, a while back. Yes, I have closed private tarot readings, um, but I did take my last uh, group of people. Thank you guys so much for your patience as I've been sending out these uh, private readings via, via email. So just keep an eye out. I still have a few more to um, send out. And thank you for your patience. So let's go ahead and get started on your reading. And yes, while I don't do private tarot readings anymore, I'm still available to you guys. Um, I offer spiritual services now. Um, now that I've kind of um, temporarily <laughs> retired from private readings, but I'm still here for you all. Um, so just visit my website and see the different ways that you can connect with me. All right, let's see. Hmm, 40 is the mask. Holy Spirit, what's the message for someone? 40 is the mass, 22 is the stairway. Hmm. 29. There's deception around. Someone's planning to do something. Yeah, your home or, okay. The house, number four, the house. It could represent a home. It could represent a building, a property, a residence, an establishment. Okay, keep that in mind. But it's called the home card. Someone is like, there's deception around you. And it's connected to some sort of building that you are in. Whether it's your house, whether it's a residential building, establishment, property. Take it how it resonates. There's deception around you though. It's close to you, right? Like the home, your home is something personal. Your home is your sanctuary, um, they're planning to do something. Look, on the back of the deck is the compass, guidance and directions. They're headed towards you. They're carrying out a plan. There's, there's someone very deceitful. That's why they're showing up as the, um, the mask, right? Two-faced. They're, they're not, they're not presenting themselves to be who they really are. And they're about to take some steps towards you. You're in your uh, feminine energy. Many times we show up in our feminine energies when we're not necessarily taking action, but we are um, thinking, contemplating, planning, okay? So you're in your feminine energy because you're not in that action mode right now. Um, you could be calm, relaxing, or maybe you're just doing more planning and contemplating than you are taking action. This is lady number one, okay? They're trying to take steps towards you. I feel like this person wants to encounter you in some way if they haven't already. Let me see. Something feels a bit spooky, actually. Something feels a bit spooky. Number 11 is the broom and the whip. The broom and the whip is all about conflict and strife. They want, there's someone here who wants to encounter you. 25 is the ring. Clarify the ring. What is it that they want? The ring is engagements and proposals. Yeah, they, they want to encounter you, right? So like to engage with someone is to come together with someone. So that makes sense. The ring is engagements, proposals, joint ventures, official partnerships, They want to come towards you. It looks like it's a man or this is connected to a man. He's showing up as gentleman number one or someone who's in their masculine energy. Clarify the ring. Somebody wants to engage with you. They want to come together with you. 43 is the labyrinth, trial and error. Let me see. Number nine is the gift. But 23 is the mice, a loss, destruction, and devastation. Hmm. Forty-three labyrinth, trial and error. Number nine, the gift. Twenty-three.
number one message. Number five, tree, health and longevity. Oops. Thirty-eight bridge overcoming difficulties. Who is this gentleman? Number one, the sun, illumination. Illumination, but then number seven, you know who he, who this man is. You have an idea because the sun is things being seen clearly, transparency. It, it's not hidden in the dark anymore. You know who this man is. He's a snake, right? The snake is someone who will betray you. He doesn't come with clarity. Number six is the cloud, a lack of clarity. There's something that he wants. He wants to engage with you. But I don't feel like it's the direction that you should go. I don't feel like you should come together with him. It's like with the labyrinth, trial, and error, it's like you would be making a mistake. You would be going the wrong direction. Boom. 26 is the book, the book of knowledge. You would be going the, the wrong direction. You would be taking the wrong path by engaging with this man. As a matter of fact, if you engage with him, you end up losing a bigger blessing. 23 is the, the, the mice, a loss, destruction, and devastation. You would end up losing some sort of gift, a blessing, an opportunity. And I think it's actually a trap. I think that someone is conspiring. I believe you have a group of people who are conspiring against you. They came together to commit a scandal against you. They know that you will be receiving an opportunity that they don't want you to receive. So they've sent this man to engage with you into some, it's the ring could even represent like contracts, engagements, proposals, joint ventures, official partnerships. It's the kind of partnership where you wouldn't just be able to get up and go. You're, you have commitments to each other. If you engage with this man, okay, and you come into an agreement, a contractual agreement with him, it will cause you, it'll cause you to lose another gift, another big opportunity that your adversaries don't want you to receive. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you have received your dream job opportunity and it's a really, really good job position. But there's someone who wants that seat, who wanted that position. And so they have paid another person to come and offer you a job position. And so as you're waiting to hear news about your dream job position, during that waiting period, someone comes in to tempt you with another job position. If you accept that other job position, you will end up, you won't be able to receive your dream job position when it does come, come towards you. Your hands would be too tied. You're already committed to another company, another job. That's what they're trying to do here. Someone's trying to misdirect you on a different path to accept something else in order to leave, leave them what they want, which is the original blessing. This is a scandal. Someone here is, has conspired against you. This man here, he is a false person. He comes with deception. He has ulterior motives. But with the sun, I believe that you are becoming aware of this or you've, you've received some sort of revelation about this. This man is a snake. He'll betray you. He's showing up as gentleman one. Very sweet, very charming, has great interpersonal skills, really knows how to bond with you and get you to feel comfortable with him, right? He reminds me of a king of cups type of energy. He wants to engage with you. It could be an offer that he presents to you, a partnership, something like that, you know, but um, he was sent to give you this offer so that you can accept it. And by the time the, the bigger blessing comes in, the original blessing comes in, your hands would already be too tied 
with this engagement that you have with him. Many of you, this could be pertaining to romance or your career and finances. Somebody wants you to lose some sort of opportunity by getting you to accept a counterfeit. He is a snake. As nice of a person that he seems he is, he has a nice personality, you know, King of Cups type. They're really good at emotionally bonding with people. He was sent to do this by your adversary. He's being exposed. He's being exposed. There are people who want you to accept a different offer so that you don't end up receiving the real one that they know is headed towards you. So we can look at this on a spiritual level. During, during your, um, your waiting period, as you're waiting for this news to come, as you're waiting for the arrival, the physical arrival of this blessing, because really you've already come together with this blessing spiritually. It's just a matter of you receiving communications about it. And for many of you, if it's a career or finance opportunity, there are deadlines to things. Okay, so it could be that this waiting period, um, if, it's a, if it's a company that wants to work with you, for example, they could be waiting for a certain deadline first before they reach out to you. So if you allow the spirit of impatience, the spirit of urgency, right, to rush you, to make you feel desperate for something, you'll end up accepting something far less than what you deserve if you could just wait it out a little bit for the big blessing, this man is false. Someone sent him to offer you, to give you this offer because they want to steer you away from the real blessing. So if you engage with him, okay, if you engage with him, if you come together with him, especially officially, uh, where there's commitments, you will lose. You won't, you'll, your hands would be too tight to receive the actual gift, the actual blessing, and you would end up taking a loss. 23, the mice. So be really careful. I feel like um, the Holy Spirit is telling you to pray for discernment because your adversaries are sending you false people who are presenting false offers to you. It's a plot to betray you, to sabotage you from what is coming towards you. So be careful with the decisions. The stairway is all about a choice. Be careful with the choices or decisions that you make. Now, there's something here about a house. It could be the house you live in. It could be a house that you're going to own. It could be a building. It could be a property. It could represent a, the company or the place that you're going to work. What does this house represent? Because that is why there's conflict. That's why they are trying to, you have people trying to challenge you because of a really big opportunity that is yours. No one can take it from you unless you forfeit it. How do you forfeit it? How do you surrender it? By choosing something else. So that, so that they can end up taking it, claiming it. It looks like it's, um, let me see here. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. Concern. Poverty. Great fortune. Hmm. High honor. It has everything to do with who you are. Why do you have adversaries doing this? It looks like you're going to be receiving an opportunity that allows you to step into something so big. And when you step into that something, you have people who are worried about what you're going to do, what you're going to do in that position. What are you going to do in that role? 
What decisions are you going to make? It's almost like concern, poverty, great fortune, and high honor. change sudden wealth see someone has someone's going to give you an opportunity to take on something it's almost like so okay i'm going to do a work advice a, a work example right because we all work so this will make sense for everyone where it's like i come to you and i say i've been owning this business but i want to give it to you I want you to take over it. I've been owning this house, but I want you to take over it. I've been in this job position, but I'm giving it to you. I'm retiring and I'm giving it to you. You're like the newcomer. You're the new person stepping into something really big. And so you have people who are carrying the spirit of fear and they are very afraid of what the future holds. They, they are afraid of what you will do, right? Um, you could be a mystery to these people. Maybe they don't know much about you. Your mystery. But they, they're scared. They're scared of who you are, what you'll do, the changes that you'll make. It's a lot of fear that's in your adversaries. Immediately, this gives you sudden wealth. God is giving you a blessing where the work has sort of already been done. Like you're in, it's like you're inheriting something that is has already been done, already been made. And that's why I did that example. It's like, okay, like I, I have something, but I want to give it to you, right? Like, okay, I've, I've had this house and it's been maintained. Everything's fine, but I want to give it to you. So you're stepping in to a house that's already prepared. It's like you're inheriting something that's already prepared for you. It's a blessing. Okay. Um, that is why you get immediate wealth. It won't feel like you're starting from scratch because many of you are already so self-made. You've already done so much work to be at the point that you're at. And so because you did your part, God is going to do his part, right? To elevate you, to prosper you. Many of you, this is an opportunity to expand on what you've already built. I strongly believe this is connected to your career and finances. I feel like this is connected to your professional life. You already have the skills, you already have the qualifications, you already have the talent, the gifts. This is a blessing that will expand what you have already done, the work that you've already done. It brings you immediate wealth. This is such a big blessing, you guys. Um, and so you have to handle yourself accordingly because no one can take this from you. You're the only one who can sabotage yourself by the bad decisions that you make. That's why 22, the choices that you make. Be really, really careful. This is some sort of job opportunity. It's an occupation opportunity. It's a career opportunity is what I mean. But it looks like you have an adversary or adversaries who don't want you to receive this opportunity. They And so they're presenting a different one. They're sending someone to present a different one to you. And then for those of you who are in the business world or the business industry, I beg of you, we just started the new year. Dedicate your business to God. Say, God, this business is yours. I dedicate this business, this company, this organization. I dedicate it to you. 
Guide me, Lord. Lead me. Show me the right thing to do. Guide my steps. And pray. Pray for your business. Because I really feel like this is connected to, and I've been saying this for a long time now, since last year, like since the middle of last year. Many of you, you've done great work in your professional life, in your career, your finance, and God wants to expand you. He is taking you to new levels and he has worked out a phenomenal, miraculous opportunity for you. It will leave you shocked and stunned. It'll change your life forever. Many of you, this is a spiritual inheritance. It is a blessing from God and it's coming in the form of an offer or opportunity that will put you on a much greater platform to serve God even more. That's why he's giving it to you. But the enemy doesn't want you to elevate, to be promoted, because you will do great things with your blessings. You will help others. And that's what the enemy doesn't want. Many of you, this is a blessing that will really help you to truly walk in your purpose and fulfill your soul's mission here on earth. And so the kingdom of darkness where the devil resides is very intimidated by you receiving this opportunity. It brings you sudden wealth. So please be careful with the decisions that you make, especially for those of you who have uh, companies, businesses, don't partner up with the wrong uh, person, place, or thing. Be careful with false partnerships in your your business life, because you know once you once you sign those contracts, it's hard to break away from it. For those of you who have gifts, skills, and talents, be careful with who you work for. You don't want to work for a false person or a false organization that ends up exploiting you, exploiting your gifts, your talents, your skills. Okay? And for those of you who have made that mistake, I want you to know that it's not impossible to break that contract. The Lord is a contract breaker. He is a generational curse breaker. He is a prison breaker. Christ Jesus, he is a chain breaker. That is, that is one of the, the miraculous, incredible, phenomenal, and powerful things that the, that the Lord is known for doing. Breaking chains, breaking strongholds. There is no contract that the Lord cannot break and cancel. There is no hole too deep that the Lord cannot pull you out of. And there's no partnership too strong that the Lord cannot sever ties. That is why for about five months now, the Holy Spirit has been encouraging me to keep on preaching about the power of prayer and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if there's one person who really understands what we go through as human beings, it's Jesus Christ. He walked the earth just like you and I. He understands what we go through. Because he experienced it, but a million times more. And so Jesus Christ can save you. He can rescue you from your troubles. It's never too late. I actually want to take the time to, just last night, it was around like 2, 3 a.m. And the Holy Spirit woke me up and gave me a message and this message is about those of you who have come into an agreement. You partnered up with an organization. Okay. An organization is a, 
a functioning uh, business. You partnered up, you joined, you came together with a false organization. And when you did this in the spiritual realm, you ended up coming together with the demonic forces that are working behind this organization. When the devil presents himself to us, he'll come in the form of various people, places, and things. Understand that the devil is a spirit. And so spirits can reside in people, places, and things. Spirits can even reside in territories, principalities. And so don't just discern people, but discern places and things as well. And so here is an organization that just looks like a typical organization physically. But their agenda is very satanic. Their agenda is fueling the kingdom of darkness. There are dark forces working behind this organization. And so when you came into an agreement with this organization, you came into an agreement with the demonic forces, the dark forces that are working behind this organization. And there must have been a paperwork, document, or contract that you signed. And when you signed it, you gave approval. You gave consent. And so you welcomed these demonic spirits into your life. You came into a partnership with an organization. And when you did that, a false organization, and when you did that, you came together with the satanic forces that are working behind this organization. And you felt something happened after you became a member. Some of you, this could be uh, an organization that you joined. It could be an organization that you invested into. It could be an organization that you work for. It could be an organization that you partnered up with in some way, shape, or form, contractually. And when you did this, there were some changes that you noticed started to happen in your life. Some negative changes occurred in your life. First of all, you started to see the red flags. Eventually, you saw the red flags in this organization. And you started to take losses. It could be that your finances started to go down. There's some sort of... Uh, uh, deprivation that you went through. You took some sort of losses. It could even be that your relationships, you know, you lost some relationships, some good bonds and connections with people. It could even be that you started to notice some bad luck occurring in your life consistently. Overall, you saw a decline. You saw a decline in your life. If it's a job, it could be that it, it's very difficult. Maybe you've tried to leave this job to find another job, but you haven't had much luck in getting hired at another place. You feel bound. You feel stuck. You feel like I just got to, you know, do it to sustain myself. Like you have no choice. And eventually you start feeling abused, overlooked, unheard, rejected. You start feeling powerless. 
those feelings and emotions, it comes from the spiritual bondage. Those are feelings and emotions of spiritual bondage where you're chained. And I'm going to show you. Like the devil card, you're chained. You're under a negative influence. You are under a demonic, a demonic force, a satanic force. You see the devil chaining these two people. You start feeling enslaved. And the abuse just gets worse and worse. Things just continue to decline. For those of you where it could have been you have a business and you came into a business partnership. And then all of a sudden you realize that your business is declining. The moment you came into that, con you, you signed that contract, you came into an agreement, you came into that partnership, you notice a decline in your business or your company. Because you join forces with uh, satanic forces, demonic forces from the kingdom of darkness. And so now you're in a situation where you're having to overcome difficulties. You're in a situation where you feel just dissatisfied, distraught. And all you can do is just sit back and watch this decline happening in your life. And some of you, you signed some bad contracts that you didn't thoroughly read and all you can do is sit back and watch someone take from you. There's someone out there where I'm seeing people are taking from you and there's nothing you can do about it because it, you signed a contract. And they're taking, whatever they're taking, it's causing you to feel impoverished. It's depriving you of what you need. And so that is why I'm telling you that the devil is a spirit. And so he can hide, his spirit can hide behind many people, places, and things, including contracts, including a uh, 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 physical places like buildings and companies and even people. Okay. And so it's almost like, I mean, this is something, this is a message that the Holy Spirit gave me just last night around 2, 3 a.m. And so I pulled out my Bible and I started reading about satanic schemes. The Bible talks about it. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And it says, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. Then another translation says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And then the new translation says, so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Then there's another translation that says, after all, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for yet more mischief. We are not oblivious to his sly ways. The devil is a scheming devil, very deceitful. And he hides behind the mask. He hides behind people, places, and things. And so we must pray for discernment to be able to see the spiritual elements behind people, places, and things. But that was the message that the Holy Spirit gave me just earlier today, <laughs> past midnight. And... For those of you who are in that situation where you're like, dream, I feel so stuck. I feel chained. I messed up. I made a mistake. Thankfully, we serve a forgiving, a forgiving God. And as long as you're willing to make amends with God, you know, 
and do things differently moving forward. He will break this contract. And now it's starting to make more and more sense why I felt guided towards late, uh, the later months of last year to do the intercessory work. For those of you who have faith in God, it's all about faith. If you don't have faith, the miracle won't happen because you don't believe. It's like prayer. You can pray and pray and pray, but if you don't have faith in the Lord, it won't happen. And that is what is happening here. Like for half of you, you made that mistake. You stepped into that trap and now you feel bound. It is spiritual bondage that you are physically feeling. You're in a spiritual bondage. And it's like all you can do is just sit back and watch someone take advantage of you. It's like you don't even have a voice. But the Lord, Jesus Christ, is the voice for those who have been silenced. He is the Savior for those who need to be rescued. He is the Lord and Savior. And so I invite all all of you, first of all, my spiritual advice, if you're in that predicament, pray. Pray without ceasing. Praying is not just a one-time thing. Pray consistently. And ask the Lord to save you, rescue you. You ask for forgiveness first, and then you... You address what you could have done differently. You address, you admit, you confess to what you did wrong and what you will do better. And then you ask God for forgiveness. And so pray consistently. Don't let this bondage make you feel defeated. In other words, don't give up. And you don't have to do it by yourself. You don't have to do it by yourself. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. You know, and I'm also here for you. I am under, um, I'm under authority. For those of you who are familiar with my work, I'm under authority, the authority of God in the name of Jesus. And when I was called to do the intercessory work, I was a bit hesitant because I said, I don't know how many of my viewers are familiar with intercessory prayer. I know I have viewers of all faith who I welcome, but I can only share with you my faith. And so we will intercede. I will intercede for you. I don't have a choice is what I'm trying to say. My life is under submission to Christ. And so when the Holy Spirit calls for me to do something, I have to do it to honor God. And so since I believe September, I have been interceding for people. And the Holy Spirit has allowed us to do miraculous things that has renewed my faith in God day by day. If I have to fast for you, I'm going to fast. I did it around October, September, where I was called to fast. And I was like, oh Lord, I love to eat. I love food. <laughs> I'm a foodie. And the Holy Spirit had taken away my appetite and I started fasting without even without even being aware of it. There would be times where I would get home, it'd be like five, five o'clock, and I'd be like, wait, I haven't eaten all day, which is crazy because I'm always eating something. <laughs> I have a fast metabolism. And so, and then I started realizing, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm fasting. 
unintentionally. I don't have an appetite. And that was the Holy Spirit helping me to fast. And prayer and fasting is what breaks spiritual strongholds, is what breaks spiritual bondages. And I'm going to put some scriptures in the description box as well to confirm this to you. And so if I have to fast, I'm going to fast. If I have to take time off work to pray consistently and continually, I will do so because I'm under submission. I'm under authority. And so that's what we've been doing with the intercessory work, the intercessory prayer work. It is for breaking spiritual bondages. And again, there is no hole too deep that the Lord cannot remove you out of. There's no contract too strong. I don't care how powerful, how wealthy, and how much status your adversary has. The power of God is supreme. And that contract can be broken, whether it's a physical contract, whether it's a spiritual contract. What I'm trying to say is some of you have come into an agreement knowingly or unknowingly with satanic forces, demonic spirits, dark forces that want to dictate your life. Demons want dominionship over our lives. And so when you are in a partnership, when you are under a spiritual bondage to a demonic spirit, you will literally feel controlled. You will feel like your life, you, you will feel like you're losing control over your life. You will, you start to feel powerless. But the Lord can rescue you because he is the Lord and Savior. That's my reminder to you guys. That was the message that I received early this morning. And that is what I see the enemies trying to do to the other, to my other half of you. Put you in some sort of false partnership. If it's a job, you have a wonderful dream job position here. I see it. But some of these things take time, especially if it's connecting to career and finances. There's deadlines that need to, you know, happen first. And so if you're willing to wait, I'm here to tell you God has something <laughs> miraculous for you. You won't even be able to explain it. And all you can say is it's by the grace of God that you received this blessing. But in, during that waiting period, it looks like your adversaries want are sending false people to present false offers so that you can take it. And then end up forfeiting the real one. And the real one brings you sudden wealth. It's like it's something that God has already, it's, it's already been prepared. You're literally just stepping in to inherit it, to take, take over it. God has already done the, the hard part for you, which is even more of a blessing. Thoughts? Main female. Hmm. There's a lot of controversy surrounding you. You keep on showing up in your feminine energy because you're you're chilling out, you know? <laughs> you keep on showing up in your feminine energy. In other readings, I think in the last reading, you were showing up in your masculine energy. But it looks like this is just the energy that you're sitting in right now. Contemplating, you're content, you're thinking, you know, maybe planning for the future. There's so much controversy around you, though, because it could be that... Some people don't know you. Like I said, they're fearful 
of what you will do when you do receive this blessing. It's something that's going to put you in a really good position and role. It might even come with power and influence. And so that's freaking them out. How are you going to use the power and influence that you will get from this role, this position? If you're a new person, then yeah, you're definitely freaking them out because you're a mystery. They're curious about you. The thoughts represents, you know, making inquiries about who you are. Now you even have thief. Thief is a scandal card. Thief, imprisonment. Hmm. You have main male. Thief. These people can't do anything to you. You're, you know, they want to sabotage you. They can't. Unless you make a bad decision, then you end up sabotaging yourself. But I do feel like they've been trying to work against you, but it's been difficult because there's another person here who's been sort of gatekeeping you because they are interested in you. It's like several, several stories in one, but it's all benefiting you. And I'm going to tell you how. You have adversaries who are very curious about who you are. They're, you know, they're making inquiries about you. They're being sneaky with a thief card. There's something sneaky that they're trying to do, maybe to know more about you. It could be that they're trying to invade your privacy, lurk around you, sneak around you, okay, to, to gather more information about who you are. And they're having a difficult time doing this because you have another person they're showing up in their masculine energy because they've been asserting themselves when it comes to you. Whoever this man or woman is in their masculine energy, they have been working overtime to secure you, to make sure that you are safe. They, it almost feels like they're gatekeeping you, but you want that during these times, during this time. You want that because you have outsiders trying to invade you. So you could use extra layer of protection. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know what this individual is doing specifically, this man or woman who's in that main male energy. I don't know what they're doing to you specifically. And maybe it's annoying. Maybe it's annoying you. Maybe it's frustrating you. But there's a plan here. If you're if you will just submit to, to God's plans and his will for your life, I promise you everything's gonna go smoothly. Everything's happening in divine planning, divine orchestration. Everything's happening. Everything's unfolding the way that it's meant because you have outsiders who want to infiltrate your life and do Lord knows what. I feel like they want to find something on you. They want to gather information about you. And many times when people are trying to gather information like this is because they want to use something against you. They're having a very hard time doing it because there is another person here, a romantic interest, because lovers, this man or woman is romantically interested in you. And so they just happen to keep an eye on you because they are fond of you. They make sure that you are secured and safe. Holy Spirit, tell us more about this. Despair. Coffin. It is whoever this man or woman is, they're, they are going through it right now. I feel like this person is going through life changes. I feel like they're going through endings. They are going through endings in their life. And this person is, they're very unhappy, despair. They don't understand why this is happening to them. Um, I don't know what this ending is that they're going through in life, but they're showing up as the wealthy man. Of course, again, they're in their masculine energy. 
they are that main male. So this person is at the forefront of something, the forefront of an operation, right? They are in charge of something. They're showing up as wealthy man. This person is successful. But there is an ending here that's happening in their life that they're having a difficult time accepting. And I'm telling you, you are their you are their comforter in a way. There's something about you that makes this person feel safe. Or maybe you are their safety blanket. There's something about you, and I believe it's that light. Your light is very healing to people. This man here has, has felt some sort of uh, bond. He has felt some sort of bond with you community yeah the community card can sometimes remind me of the soulmate card of course it's not going to show up again because it already showed up the lovers but I feel like there's a bond maybe you guys are from the same soul family but there's something about you where it just like you are a soulmate to him in some way shape or form whether it's a romantic soulmate platonic soulmate familial soulmate not everything has to be romance but there is a bond there there you you have become very familiar to him and he's very comfortable with you. And he does these little things where I feel like he'll, he'll check up on you. He kind of goes out of his way to accommodate you. This could be someone who has kept their distance. Maybe they haven't come forward yet to introduce themselves or maybe they have, but you are, you are someone who uh, this person pays attention to yeah they they're trying to sort of uh cater to you they, they they like to extend themselves to you in different ways and i feel like it's by accommodating you in some way shape or form okay um just making sure that you are okay like this is someone who will do things for you without you even though you didn't ask for it It could even be that this person wants to help you because the gift card represents the aid, the assistance, and the support that you need. That is what he or she is providing. I don't feel like this man or woman means any harm to you. The courtship card is here coming together. The two of you are just simply on the same page. This person may even be aware of what another person is trying to do to you, but they are extending themselves to assist you. Courtship coming together. I dropped that one. Occupation. Working together. That's what it is. They want to work together with you. And it doesn't even have to, it could be like a non-verbal thing, you know? <laughs> Sometimes God will just like highlight you to someone and they just become fond of you. They just want to assist you. They just want to support you. I don't feel like this person means any harm. Yes, you have adversaries, but also be really, really careful not to carry that spirit of fear because then you become paranoid and you start feeling like everyone is out to get you. All you're being called to do is wait. Expectation, like how the woman's waiting on, at the window. All you're being called to do is wait. You are secured. First of all, I feel like this main male or main woman, I feel like they're in your community. They're closer to you than you may know. They are securing you. They're making sure that you're, you're guarded and everything's fine, that you're protected and everything's fine. You're special to this individual. I feel like they're just fond of you. Sometimes you just meet people and you just like them, you know? Um, I feel like that's what's going on. And you want this because you have people who are trying to encounter you for all the wrong reasons. So you could use that extra layer of security. I'm just saying. But you're called to wait with expectation. Wait until this news finds you. Distant horizons. Distant horizons represents our deepest thoughts yearnings, imaginations, then you have message of concern, 
you're you're doing a lot of daydreaming is what it is as you're waiting you're doing a lot of daydreaming and you're wondering what this could what this news could possibly be about like how you see the woman here reading the letter well, it looks like it's a letter that you're going to receive or it's communications that you're going to receive. It's connected to, and I said it earlier, courthouse. Courthouse represents paperwork, paperwork, contracts, documents. It's some sort of career opportunity, financial offer, or a business deal. That's what it is. It's a career opportunity or a financial offer, or a business deal. And it's a big one. It prospers you. This is God's blessings. This is God's way of elevating you. That's what courthouse represents according to the Kipper deck that we're using. You see the judge and the paperwork in his hands. It's legal, something that is official now for those of you who got caught up where you stepped into a trap and you have come into some sort of binding some sort of contract with a false person place or thing you would need to separate yourself from that false person place or thing before you can receive this this real authentic blessing that you were intended to receive. And that's the thing with partnering up with false people, places, and things, because they take on the position of the real blessing. And until they leave, there will be no room for that real blessing, that real person, place, or thing. That is why we have to be super duper care careful with coming together, partnering up, especially officially in, in commitments, committing to false people, places, and things because they do a lot of damage. They take on the position of the real person, place, or thing. So until there's room, that real person, place, or thing can't come in. You can only be committed to one thing at, at a time. So for those of you where you didn't step into that trap, be careful not to. Wait patiently and pray for discernment. And for those of you where you did make a mistake, we all make mistakes, we call it human error, and God is forgiving. And again, there is no hole too deep that the Lord can't remove you out of if you have true faith. Okay, and I'm here for you. I am more than open and happy to working with you and spiritually interceding for you so that that to break you out of that bondage, to break that contract or whatever is binding you. So that by the time this blessing arrives, by the time the news arrives, your hands would be free. You're not chained anymore. You're not imprisoned your hands would be free and you would be able to receive it. That is what I am being called to do for you. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed the message. I hope you resonated. And if you're interested in connecting with me, I'm going to put my information in the description box. Um, there will be a link to my website. Just go on the website, read it, read it thoroughly. Everything about this intercessory prayer work, I have written it on the website. Read it. If you have questions, email me. Thank you guys so much. If you want to submit um, a prayer request, you're welcome to. Um, if you want to email me, email me. If you want to make a donation, I'll put the link there as well. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. My schedule has been super duper busy. I have had to make some changes in my schedule just to be available to you guys. So thank you guys so much for all of the support. Take care and many blessings to you.